Hi, this is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about how to record payment processing fees in QuickBooks. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings. We record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. This just in from YouTube, Tom Perkins has replied to a comment of mine on a QuickBooks Online banking tip that I created. And he says, okay, here's one, how to record the 50 cents Intuit payment network takes from payments received. Other suggestions online haven't worked for me. Excellent question. And just to zoom out and make this even more generic, how do you deal with a payment processing fee in QuickBooks? You use PayPal, whoever you use to process payments is going to take a fee out. Now hopefully, in most cases, what they'll do is they'll take the fees out, they'll fund you gross and then take the fees out in a separate transaction. So then it's easy, you just record a payment to credit card processing fees for whatever amount they've taken out. But sometimes what they do is they fund net. When you use uh, things like PayPal or the Intuit payment network, they take the fees out and then they drop it in. The good news is they process each payment individually so it's very clear to see exactly which transaction and, uh, and how many fees were taken from that specific transaction. What, what used to be a mess, and I think most credit card companies or credit card processing companies have stopped doing this, is they would process a whole day's worth of transactions, sometimes lump two and three days together, take the fees out and fund net. And you had the fun job, or I had the fun job, of trying to piece it back together and figure out which gross payments added together, which when having the fees subtracted, added up to the right net amount that I would see clearing in the client's bank account. Used to drive me crazy. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So what we're talking about here is, let's say I got a payment of $5,000. Let's say the processor is charging me 2.9% or $145. The net amount I'm going to receive is $4,855. How do we deal with that? in QuickBooks? The answer is simple. So we're going to look at this example. Uh, let's go to an open invoices report. Okay, and we've got an invoice for Blind and Rob and Bill them for $5,000. We're going to say that they've paid us. So we're going to say customers receive payments. Now remember, the theory here is that we only got $4,855 in our account and I'm trying to bring my Excel screen back up. This is one of the little nuances that drives me crazy about QuickBooks, is every time a new screen pops up, it sort of like comes to the front and interrupts you, except the times when you really want it to, which is like when you're waiting for an update to finish or something, and all of a sudden you're wondering what's going on with QuickBooks, and then you realize on your other screen in the background there's a pop-up waiting for you to respond. Anyway, um, so remember the theory here is we're only getting $4,855, so the temptation might be to let's pull up uh, blind them, rob them, and bill them. And the temptation might be to say that we only got $4,855. The problem is they've actually paid us the whole 5000 So you can't do it that way. You have to give them credit here for the entire 5000 Now, I've seen where lots of bookkeepers are uh, want to basically create a discount at this point to cover the fee. I don't like doing it that way. It tells the wrong story. It makes it seem like I gave the client a discount, not like I'm paying a fee. Even if you apply that discount to the credit card processing fees account on the books, I still don't like it because again, it tells the wrong story. And while many bookkeepers I understand are really just thinking in terms of how to get the transaction posted, I'm always thinking big picture later on somebody's combing through the books trying to say evaluate the company for investment purposes or financing purposes and they want to see what's going on and if they see that we're giving customers all these discounts and then they see cash flow is not good they may be concerned that that's why whereas if they see that we're just paying high processing fees that's a very different story that's something that can be dealt with a little differently so I think it's important to tell the right story when you're recording your transactions. Accordingly, we post the whole $5,000. We pretend like we got the whole amount for a minute. And as we know, or hopefully we know, where it says here, where does this payment go? If you click on that, it's going to tell you all about the undeposited funds account. I've got videos on that. Save and close. No more open invoices. Banking. Make deposits. Now we're going to actually put the money in our bank account. Here's where we're going to get to deal with the fee. So I come over to banking, I click make deposits, and I get accused of going fast. So I'm going to try and make this nice and slow. Banking, make deposits. I, I don't think I could go any slower. 
I could slow down my speech pattern. Banking make deposits. Okay, hopefully I've made that point clear. Um, what will happen is it says we have payments to deposit. So again, we have the whole $5,000. I select it. This is coming from undeposited funds or payments to deposit. I click OK. I choose my bank account. Now we get to deal with the credit card processing fees. And the credit card processing fees under receive from, I like to put the name of the processor so that I associate the expense with the vendor. So this might be Intuit Online Payments. I'll just do a quick add on that. Vendor, OK. And this is going to be credit card processing fees and I personally like to set this up as a cost of goods sold account type for the simple reason that I like to see my processing fees as a direct offset against income because if I have no income I have no processing fees very simple over here what have we got hundred and forty five dollars so we put it in minus 145 and I get my net 48.55. Let's think this through for a minute. Why am I putting minus besides the obvious that I have to get it to the deposit subtotal? I want, I'm also hoping that this is going to be a positive expense. Well, remember, we're depositing it into a bank account. A bank account is an asset. Debits increase assets. So normally whatever I put here is an increase to an asset account. It's a debit to the bank account right well this is reducing effectively what ultimately goes into the bank account so a negative item is a credit to the bank account which means the offsetting account here under from account is what's getting the debit debits increase expenses so I am actually increasing the credit card processing fees expense account let's take a look and see what this looks like on the balance sheet we already see that we've got the five thousand there in undeposited funds okay profit and loss standard I've got the five thousand dollars in income because I already received the or I posted the invoice this is a cruel basis if I switch to cash basis it still shows up because I already recorded the payment it's sitting in undeposited funds right so it doesn't really make a difference at this point a cruel or cash we've already recorded the fact that the payments been received let's come back here Watch what happens. Save and close. My bank account now has the proper amount that I received, $4,855. My credit card processing fees expense came through at $145. So everything works. That, my friends, is how you process a payment in QuickBooks when a fee was taken out before the money was funded into your bank account. Post your comments and questions below. As always, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.